Okay, so welcome back to the tutorial, everybody. And before we go ahead and start working on our project here, I just want to give you a little bit of a, a note as to why we're not actually going to take a look here at our animation, um, our dynamics, our end dynamics. And in my 2012 or in 2013, you have end hair, um, end particles, and end cloths. And we're not actually going to be taking a look at these simply because of the fact that there are so many tools with inside the animation um, module inside of Maya that it would not only take me an excessively long time to go ahead and um, teach you every single one of those tools, but it, it would be better if um, there was a tutorial geared specifically towards the animation tool set inside of Maya. Um, I'm not necessarily an animator, so <clears throat> I'm not actually going to walk you through um, every single tool that's on the animation tab or the dynamics tab. These are more for things that are, um, let's gonna say, be like VFX artists for movies, for games, um, and your end dynamics are basically the same thing but it's just a little bit different and like I said we're not going to walk through each one of those because they're so geared specific um, for what they actually are whether it be for animation or, or dynamics or um, visual effects inside of movies and, and inside of games um, so we're just going to go ahead here and start our project and, and we're going to learn a little bit about the anime um, a little bit about rendering whenever we go to render our project here so let's go ahead and get started and the first thing that we need to go ahead and do is simply create a project file and folder for our, our project that we're currently working on and this is going to allow you to help organize your work so that you can stay organized and have everything working properly inside of Maya so let's just come up here to hit file come down to project we're going to hit new here okay and we're going to rename our project and we're going to call this our stopwatch okay and we're simply going to use our defaults here inside of Maya okay and you can see where the location here is on our um, our computer but <clears throat> I'm simply going to use our CG Tuts folder there to go ahead and create our project so let's go ahead and click accept here and now that we're ready to go ahead and start working here you can see where it's going to create the folders that we need specifically for whether it be our um, our project um, I'm sorry our scenes our source images or our textures you know whether they be um, .3ds files whether it be data files which will contain things like your your object meshes or OBJ files um, your mel scripting you can see where you have pretty much a folder for each one of those and it's going to allow you to keep organized here okay so now that we have that set up what we also need to go ahead and do here is let me go ahead and pause the video because I need to to grab an image real quick okay my apologies for that um, I just simply placed a, an image folder into our source images folder so we can go ahead and bring that into my hair um, now what we need to do is we need to to basically have something to model off of because in order for me to to model a stopwatch I can probably do that without any image reference but it's gonna make my job that much easier if I actually have something to go ahead and model off of here so let's go ahead and hit our spacebar so that we can jump to our four um, view panel here and we're gonna come down here to where it says our front view okay we're just gonna go ahead and click view here click image plane click import image and you can see where that it's going to read <coughs> your source images folder of your uh, project directory here so we'll just double click on our stopwatch PNG here and it's going to bring in our our image planes for our stopwatch and you can see right away in our perspective view where it brings it in at the 000, zero axis okay which is our um, basically our origin of your grid and if we went and started modeling from this our geometry is basically going to be pushing through our image plane and we don't necessarily want that we want to be able to go ahead and move this image plane back in a way so that we're going to have a 
free space here to go ahead and model freely and the easiest way for us to go ahead and do that is just come back down here to view image plane image plane attributes image plane one and you can simply always go ahead and rename this to something like stopwatch image okay I almost spelt that wrong and then you just hit enter and you can see where it's going to update that you also have um, controls here to go ahead and color um, adjust the color gain or, or the color offset of your image here and you can see where moving that's going to basically update that in the um, front and perspective views here or say something like if you have an alpha channel inside of your image you can simply turn that down and you'll be able to get just the alpha in your image um, I didn't put an alpha in this image there's really no no need for me to go ahead and do that here okay so let's come down here to the bottom and we're just simply going to think of this as we need to go ahead and move it in our Z axis here so it's going to move back. So you can think here where our center is going to be X, our Y direction, and our Z direction. This is going to be from front to back, top to bottom, okay, and then left to right. So we need to go ahead and move this back here in our Z. So I'm just holding down control left clicking in our Z axis and simply just moving this back so we'll just say set a number something like negative um, negative 25 should be fine and give us more than enough room to go ahead and begin our modeling here okay so let's come in here and just jump into our front view and I just hit the space bar to go ahead and jump into our view there now we need to think well how are we going to model this stopwatch and the easiest way that I always find to go ahead and start my projects is basically block out all of the uh, general shapes here with polygon primitives or simply doing it by hand and this is going to allow you to go ahead and get a general overview of your model fairly quickly and then you can simply work from there and begin the the actual detailing phase of your model so we need to go ahead and create a, a basic primitive here for our body shape and we're just going to come over here and jump to our polygon shelf and we're simply just going to use our polygon cylinder to go ahead and create the the basics of the geometry here um, we'll start out like I said with the body and we'll just simply left click and drag here trying to get this right in the middle of the watch and you can see where we have the the general shape here okay and we'll just go ahead and jump back into our perspective view here and we'll simply just drag this out to how thick we actually want this stopwatch okay and from there we're not actually going to do much more simply because we have to first figure out how we're going to edit this geometry to go ahead and cut these side pieces and top piece in okay so let's just continue blocking out here let's go ahead and create a polygon torus here for this the circular mesh let's jump back into our front view here okay and we'll just try and get this right in the middle of our um, our image plane and we'll just left click and drag out so that our size matches here okay and just left click and drag again to make sure that we have the shape correct okay and we're not necessarily going to need 20 divisions around the the circumference of this polygon torus so come over here to the right and change our subdivision axes and height from 20 we're going to just jump down to say something like 12 and if we hit 3 on our keyboard with that selected you can see where it's going to give us a smooth preview of our mesh and that looks okay um, there shouldn't really be a problem there and let's go ahead and create uh, these three little buttons here so that we can go ahead and get the rest of this basically blocked in so we're just going to come back here and draw another polygon cylinder okay and we'll just drag this out on our our grid just moving this up and we'll just go ahead and try and place this properly here okay 
and we'll simply just try to get this placed correctly inside of our viewport here and scaled and sized correctly okay and I'm just gonna hit insert here so I can move my pivot down to the bottom of the mesh and it's not gonna scale anymore from the center it's gonna scale from the bottom here so you can see where it's gonna be not uh, editing the bottom of the mesh you can see where it's just gonna scale like that okay so we'll just go ahead and since we have that placed we'll go ahead and duplicate this simply by hitting control D on our keyboard and we will go ahead and simply just duplicate this over and we'll go ahead and try and place this properly as well and we will go ahead and duplicate this one more time go ahead and rotate it again just trying to make sure that we line everything up here properly and we need to rotate this just a little bit more okay and I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this up just a little bit and you can see now where we have basically blocked in our stopwatch okay for the most part and I just want to go ahead and make this last um, little top button here so we'll just simply go ahead and right click over our polygon cylinder here and we will simply just go ahead and select the top faces of our polygon cylinder we're going to come up here to edit mesh hit duplicate face and it's simply going to duplicate those faces on our mesh here and we'll go into object mode deselect the bottom portion of our um, cylinder there okay and we'll just go ahead and move that back and we're simply gonna go ahead and hit edit uh, I'm sorry modify and I want to center the pivot so that the pivots actually right in the center of the model and we're gonna go ahead and scale that up a little bit okay and just try and place that properly so let's take a look here in our front view and we'll go ahead and grab our vertices just pulling this down and I think I need to go ahead and scale this up just a tiny bit more here so we'll just go to modify center our pivot okay and we'll just scale that up a little bit more there and that looks fine so let's go ahead and just simply marquee select and grab all of these okay hitting control G on our keyboard and this is gonna allow us to group those so that we can move them all at one time okay and we'll just simply go ahead and move these into position um, as you can see we don't necessarily see a wireframe on our model here so I just want to go ahead and click this little um, cubed button with a what looks like a wireframe around it and that's gonna turn the wireframe of our model on okay and now you can see where we simply have a basic block out of our stopwatch and that's actually looking pretty good right now um, so we'll go ahead here and it's very important that you also learn, understand to learn to save um, a lot so that if Maya tends to crash or if let's say you have a problem and, and something's not working properly you can basically jump back to an earlier version of your model and then continue working from that so let's go ahead and let's save here okay so we'll call this stopwatch one and we'll just simply hit save as and it'll save our scene for us okay so I'm gonna call it a pause for this lesson and then we will come back and we will continue working on our stopwatch here and uh, come on back